So the last thing, I'm just going to take a little bit of time to talk about the stuff I've learned being a talk mentor. Um, and that's because I think being able to give a good talk is an important skill, uh, no matter what career you end up in. Talks are going to get you jobs. Uh, they'll put you in line for promotion. They'll motivate other people to, to try and build on the work that you've done. So how do you give a good talk? Well, it all starts with a good introduction. Um, the introduction is when the audience is paying attention. Everybody in the room is giving at least some attention to you. Even people with phones in their lap, ready to use their phone at the first opportunity, uh, are giving you a little bit of attention, giving you, giving you an opportunity to tell them why they should listen to this talk. Um, giving you an opportunity to tell them why it's worth their time on a Wednesday night when there's about to be wine and prizes and they've already listened to two talks, why they should pay attention to you. And you really need to motivate them. You really need to tell everybody why they should listen to your talk. Um, and so I was talking to my housemate about this um, last week. And I think he indicated to me that he, he understood what I meant when he said, right, so what I need to do is I need to make sure that my audience understand that I'm about to tell them how to get laid. And I said, well, no, you need to understand your audience. And if you're talking to a room of Komskis, <laughs> that might be unachievable. So you need to present at the right level. You need to present knowing your audience. And that'll really help you motivate them to follow what you're about to say. That'll really help you get a personal connection with them. And that'll really help you convey your message to them. And understanding your audience is also important because you need to be able to, to present the right technical content. But just in the same way that the introduction, you really just need to get them to pay attention, it's the same thing. You need to, get, you need to connect with your audience to really convey your, your message. And once you've connected with them, it's easy to convey the enthusiasm you have for what you're presenting. Again, in the same way the introduction was to try and motivate people to listen, if you're enthusiastic enough about the topic that you're presenting about, people will be enthusiastic for you. It will take a weight off the technical content. It will take a vast weight off it because suddenly people are willing to work for you to understand what you're trying to tell them. You don't have to tell them all the details because they're willing to go and work them out themselves. And everyone else's enthusiasm is a function of your own. You're the only person who's excited about your, the topic you're talking about, and you need to make sure everyone else is too. Um, and I will say, I think you were all enthusiastic about your topics. Every one of you, when I did practice with you, I saw some enthusiasm for your topics. You all did research on them. You all spent a lot of hours reading up about what you were going to present on. And unfortunately, sometimes that didn't come through. And one of the main reasons I think it didn't come through was nerves. It's hard to control nerves. Um, and ultimately, it's a really personal topic. And I can't tell you one hard, fast way to control your nerves. But some nerves aren't a bad thing. If you find that your nerves are decreasing as you go through a presentation, it probably not worth worrying about. Um, maybe memorize the first sentence of the introduction. That, that's what I did today. I had a first sentence of the introduction that I'd memorized in case I was too nervous to, to start strong. And, but if you find that your nerves are increasing or constant, um, it's worth trying to do something about them. And again, it's really personal. So I'm just going to give one example. Um, I knew a musician um, who never struck me as the kind of person who would be a really good performer because she always got really nervous in, in stressful situations. And so I asked her one day, you know, what, what, do you do, what did you do to start uh, playing in front of audiences confidently? And she said, well, when I started playing at recitals, I would go watch a YouTube video before I played of a musician who I thought was a good musician, who, who I kind of idolized. And then when I was playing, I would just imagine I was them. I wouldn't be me on the stage. I would be imagining I was them. So you could do a similar thing with talking. You could pick someone who you think is a really good speaker, uh, who you idolize, like, like me, for example. Uh, and, and you could just imagine you're them. And for, you, for all you know, I'm doing it now. You know, I could be pretending I'm Barack Obama. You know, yes, we can control our nerves. Um, and when you have your nerves under control, one of the first things that you should be doing is you should make sure you're speaking loudly enough. This is a big room. If you're speaking in a broom closet, then yeah, keep your voice down because you don't want to deafen people. But to really get your enthusiasm to reach the far corners of this room, to reach that fire extinguisher and that fire extinguisher, to make them eager to give good talks, you have to be loud enough. And 
The other thing that comes, comes hand in hand with this is emphasizing some words on a sentence level. Not, I'm not talking about emphasizing words that are technically important. I'm talking about emphasizing words that help the audience who might not fully be paying attention to follow your sentences. I'm talking about just, just get adding a little bit of rhythm in so that it's a little bit easier for people to follow. Emphasizing technical content is best done on your slides. Um, slides really help keep the audience on track. Even if you forgot how I got to this slide, if you forgot how I got here, you still know I'm talking about slides right now because it says slides up there on the screen. And they help keep you on track as a speaker also. They help, they, they're, they're like notes. They're like notes of the modern talk. But slides can also be risky because slides require some context from the audience to follow. Um, if, if you're following the speaker, you require one context in your mind to think about, to, to put everything the speaker is saying into view, to make sure that you understand what they're saying. And if the, the slides can also require that. If the slides have a lot of text, if the slides have a lot of issues with them, uh, sorry, this one, if the slides have a lot of text, if the slides have, have a lot of detail that's not necessary, it can, it can just use that second context and that becomes really hard to, to follow. It becomes really hard to context switch between the slides and the speaker. And as a speaker, you want to be in charge. You are the reason that people are coming to listen. People aren't coming to read your slides. They're coming to, to see some personality behind what you're presenting. If people just wanted to read your slides, they could sit at home and read a textbook. Um, so you need to make sure that your slides don't dominate you. And it is hard in this room where the slides are in the middle of the stage and I'm here pushed in the corner. But if you make sure that your slides just support you and don't, do and don't push you away, don't, aren't the center of attention, that you are the center of attention, then what you're saying will come across a lot better. And hopefully, if you have good slides, it will allow you to present a very clear storyline. Uh, a storyline that, in the same way as the introduction, where you motivated everybody to listen, where, you sit, where, where that was your chance to get somebody to listen to your talk. The storyline is your chance at every single slide to remind them why that slide is important and why they should be focusing on, your, on that slide. And it's not necessarily easy to come by a storyline. So for this talk, I rearranged a large number of the slides uh, after the first draft. I did, I did a draft, I ran through it, some of the slides didn't flow very well. I rearranged them all um, so that I could have a storyline that flowed through. Because if you're going to slides that the audience has no idea that you're going to go to, then it's, it's hard for them to want to follow it. Uh, ideally, you want, to, you want to set up some cliffhangers in your talk and, and then pull them off the cliffhangers. And just like a novel, I know, I know you're not presenting a novel. You're presenting hard technical content. But there's a reason that people can follow novels when they read them. And you want to try to emulate that same idea. And at the end of every story, there's a good conclusion. Um, now, the conclusion is important because ultimately it's what people are going to remember. You've done, a, you've done a fantastic introduction. You had clear sides. You had a compelling story. People followed all the way through. But at, since it's the last thing you're going to say, that's the, that's the take home. That's what they're going to take home. Um, and so what I find works better here is a key message rather than a summary. Not just listing all the things I talked about, but here is the most important thing that I want you to know, that I want you to take home, that, uh, that you should really remember. And that's not to say you can't do a summary, but it's to say that if you do a summary, put the summary in context of your, of your key point. Uh, remind everybody why the whole talk, the whole way through, you were just talking about one key thing. So if I were to take a key message for this talk, I would say be enthusiastic about your message. Be enthusiastic about what you're trying to present, and a lot of these things will just kind of fall into place. Um, so with that, I'd like to just say thanks. I'd like to say thanks to Matthew for organizing everything. Um, thanks to the Wilson Hall staff who aren't here who were able to set up the video recording when I was incapable. Um, thanks to everyone who gave feedback. I'm sure everyone who's received peer feedback would agree it's been really helpful. Um, and lastly, uh, thanks to everyone who spoke. Uh, like, you know, the talks don't happen if you don't speak. 
Matthew can organize as many Wolfson Hall bookings as he likes. Uh, <laughs> if there's no speakers, it's quite empty. So uh, yeah, thank you. And with that, we'll move on to some prizes.